Hi once again to all our friends and televiewers, stakeholders, as well as the faculty, staff, students of Foundation University, as well as those who have been following us and watching us all these years. This is once again your Thursday habit. We are on iGreyhound, the official talk show of Foundation University, and we are being streamed live on the main Facebook page of Foundation University. And of course, we are right here on Channel 6 of Phil Products TV Dumaguete. My name is Cecil Henove, and as always, we make it a point to make sure that our episodes are very interesting, entertaining, and informative as well. So, for tonight's episode, friends, this is no exception because we found it fit to invite this lady who is of course an alumna of Foundation University and well it's not really an ambush interview but because she is here for a visit in her native Philippines we found it of course an opportune time to invite her here over so we are right now here in our studio at Foundation University and we would like to welcome to our midst and welcome her back home and welcome her as well to our studio uh, Miss Lisa Celis Neuer yes hi Miss Lisa Hi, I, I'm glad to be here. Uh, thank yeah. you for inviting me. It's, yes, I. It's a good opportunity to actually speak a little bit about my background. Yes, and, right. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Tanelona Force yes. because he's the one who suggested I should speak to you right. today. Yes, so. yes. Yeah. So, um, Engineer Marlon Tanilon is the Dean of yes. the School of Industrial Engineering and Technology. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'd like to ask uh, Miss Lisa, I'd like to welcome you back home, no, by the way, because uh, I understand you're a graduate of uh, Foundation University back in 20, 2000 and, 2001. Yes. And you finished uh, cum laude. Yes. At the top of your class, you graduated as class valedictorian. Uh, with an BS, right? Yeah, Bachelor BS. of Science in Industrial uh, engineering. engineering degree. Now, tell us, uh, Miss Lisa, your journey after graduation. Maybe we can put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, after shortly after graduation, I actually went to the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, to marry my fiance. Okay. He is a uh, uh, a native in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Mm -hmm. He also has an engineering degree like me. He just graduated as well when I met him. Okay. So I was this wide-eyed, full of dreams, 22-something yeah. um, years old yes. <laughs> back then. So when I um, came to the U.S., it was, um, it was a shock. It was like... Um, culture shock basically mm -hmm. because I have to assimilate myself to everything yeah. food language can you imagine how culture, thick culture everything. can you imagine how thick my, yeah. accent, back okay. so Bisaya, thick my yeah. accent back then okay. so people, Bisaya the Bisaya accent yeah the uh, Bisaya yeah. accent and you have to speak English yes. right and so so I went there um, and I've learned that one of the things that I've learned is that it doesn't matter who you were mm -hmm. back in your home country mm -hmm. I met people like me when I went back to the university actually that doesn't matter what education you have okay. you have to start from the beginning okay. so that is why I decided to um, go back to school because I have trouble finding a job yeah right. so I was this hopeful very ambitious kind of thing it's like somebody smacked me behind my head like <laughs> nope you have to start all over again. Oh my. <laughs> did, did it not like uh, deter you from moving forward? Something like, oh my, what am I getting myself into? No, Here I am in the first world, in a first world country. And uh, maybe I can label all of us no, who mm. would be going to another country as a provinciana type of individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, no, not really. It's actually, it's, it's disheartening mm -hmm. it's really hard to move forward but I grew up in a very humble family my grandmother okay. raised me we're mm -hmm. very poor to be honest with you mm -hmm. we're very poor there are days that we hardly have you know food to mm -hmm. eat mm -hmm. I finish um, my engineering degree with full ride here in the university okay. otherwise I would have not gotten any degree mm -hmm. at all I was the first in the family to actually have a Get college a degree, degree. Oh yes my. from my grandma's generation okay. to her kids okay. to her grandkids i was the first one yeah so, and, your, and with your parents as well no uh, my uh, grandmother because oh, my okay. parents had their own family uh, i was okay. um uh, my R mom already have her own family okay. my father's already have her own family oh. they broke up when i was three months old oh my yes. so you were raised by your grandparents correct okay i was raised okay. by my grandmother okay. uh, so I already have that mm. life, so I know that you know it doesn't matter what you do, you just yeah. have to keep going. Yes, and yes. I've been really fortunate to have that upbringing. Mm -hmm. So 
It was hard, but you know, I, I went to school. Uh, I went back to school and decided yeah. to take an accountancy. Yes, yes. And I also work uh, at the same time. So I went to school full time and I worked part time as well when okay. I was there yeah. just to so, help out. Yeah. So in other words, uh, curiosity again has gotten the better <laughs> of me. No? Uh, the, the degree that you earned here mm. in the Philippines would not take you anywhere in the U.S. Not at that time. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, actually, they're probably a little bit more um, forgiving okay. because even now, if let's just say you're a native Michigan, you live from Michigan, for okay. example, and you mm -hmm. get you become a sophomore, right, mm -hmm. students, and you go to Indiana, so or any other state, mm -hmm. and if you go back and you enroll to a class, they actually won't let you. Um, Take, uh, you have to go back one year, I think. Okay, to, yeah, yes. So for us, mm -hmm. that they don't need, some of the some of the people actually don't even know where Philippines are. Yes. Okay. So my goodness. So it was like, how come? That's a reality. Uh, yes. Now, how no? much yeah. more your degree? So yes, when yes. I went back to the U.S., that's another thing that I've learned. In the mm -hmm. U.S., you cannot take any classes at all towards your degree unless you pass your English as a single second language class, oh, your ASL okay, class. Yeah. That's and a requirement. And at the time, uh, there was no senior high school yet well, no. while you were here in no. college. Yeah. No, okay. no. So, so it that's was, the one. Oh. Yeah, so I went back and got an ESL class, but mm. thankfully it was, you know, Filipinos are really good yes, in English regardless, yes, right? So, yes, yes, yes. So there was Good speakers three tier, of the English yeah. language. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we have three tier over there. Okay. I passed the first year, so okay. it only took me like I only was one semester, and I was able to uh -oh. take classes yes. towards my degree okay. Okay. after that. Yeah. So, yeah. So it was a maybe I can describe it as a long hard climb yes. from Dumaguete yes. onwards to the U.S. Mm -hmm. and again uh, enrolling yourself mm -hmm. no, in school and taking up practically a fresh degree from Correct. your industrial engineering degree mm -hmm. here now. Why accountancy of all the possible courses that you could take? Why not a health-related profession? Because I think that's uh, what is prevalent <laughs> yes. in the U.S. Yes, actually, some people actually mistaken me as a nurse. When yeah. I, when you ask, are you a nurse? I no, I'm an accountant. Like, mm -hmm. huh? So anyway, uh, the reason that I pick accountancy is because accounting is actually the sec one of my second choice since oh, I was okay. in high school. Mm -hmm. I told myself, I'm not going to be an engineer, I'm going to be an accountant. Okay. So that's why I told myself, I'm, I'm given a second chance. Why not yeah. take the accounting this yes, time? Yes, yes. Also, as a minority, I felt like being an accountant, I have more, um, I can compete more to find a job compared to being an engineer as a woman mm -hmm. and, minor and a yeah. minority mm -hmm. over there at that time. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes sense for yeah. me. <laughs> yes, yes. That's why I decided to yeah. be an accountant. And uh, during that time when you were able to finally get your degree in accountancy or accounting, mm -hmm. uh, was it easy for you now to get into the professional world? Yes. Were, were there struggles or obstacles or was it easy for you? Uh, it was not hard in a way mm -hmm. because one of the things I, my ex my ex husband mm -hmm. my husband then was yeah. very supportive okay. and he told me one way to make sure that I can actually compete against other na Native American uh, no Caucasian American yeah. who's also okay. vying for the same job yes, is yes. for me to have an experience mm -hmm. a job experience so I was very fortunate to actually have an internship at mm -hmm. GE Consumers Industrial okay. it's mm -hmm. a well-known uh, company in any of the yeah. uh, around the world really mm -hmm. so I, w I was able to intern over there and I also after that I was also uh, I did an internship at Lincoln Financial Group. Okay. It's an insurance company. It's also well known around the U.S. Yes, yes, so okay. for me to have those things mm -hmm. um, on my on paper on yes. my resume, mm -hmm. it helps me find my next career. So before I graduated, I start applying for a new job. Like a few months before I graduated, mm -hmm. I already started applying for a job and mm -hmm. I got an offer before I graduated. Wow, yeah. And so. I think your internship also helped a yes, lot, no? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So that's one of the things I actually like... Um, encourage some of the students during my speech on last Wednesday that if you have an opportunity to do an internship, an apprenticeship with pay yeah. or no pay, mm -hmm. take it. 
because yeah. it's a good experience. It's good, something good to put in your resume. Yeah. To say, hey, I've done this. Right. Uh, you know. And, and chances are usually if they are impressed, no, mm -hmm. with the intern's mm -hmm. uh, performance, then they take you in mm -hmm. into the company. No. Tell us, uh, Miss Lisa, about the experience that you have now in the U.S. I think for about more than 20 years that mm -hmm. you have been working in yes. that uh, accounting field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how has it been immersing yourself in this very challenging profession? Huh? Yeah, it is. It is very challenging it was for me it was just it was not a breeze there's mm, a yeah. lot of challenges of course yeah. because <laughs> it depends on the on the uh client depend of the company mm -hmm. that you okay. work for yeah. i unfortunately for me i work with a very uh multi most of my the company i work for is multinational companies mm -hmm. so they're already well diverse okay so they already have people and around uh, companies or location in different countries so they understand uh, they are more uh, accepting yeah. so that makes it easier so it, it was it was good and it actually just motivate me as a, as a woman and mm -hmm. as a minority it mm -hmm. motivates me to work yeah. harder and to actually help my train like I said my training in uh, I may not be an engineer mm -hmm. in profession but my training here in foundation yeah. university actually helped me a lot right. because as an engineer, you're trained to solve problems mm -hmm. differently. You, you know, there's a process that mm -hmm. you always have to go through. You you figure out what's given, what data you have, yeah. what you need to do to solve issues. Or you, as an engineer, you're also trained to look at things, mm -hmm. how things work, mm -hmm. uh, how how to make things better. And mm -hmm. I work that way. Yeah. So I was like, in every role I have, I give my 110%. Okay. <laughs> and obviously, because that's one of the things that you prove yourself and set yourself apart from others. I always find ways to make the processes uh, efficient. Mm -hmm. And I think that's thanks to my engineering degree yeah. because that's the basically the mindset yeah. that you that w were drilled to us yes, yes. like a continuous process improvement mm -hmm. all that stuff mm -hmm. um so yeah yeah i was able to do mm -hmm. that and climb the ladder for yeah, right. reasons i i manage mm -hmm. um people and it's yeah. like the first time i managed the first time i managed uh, uh a department. Mm -hmm. I was so happy. I told. Me, I went back home. I said oh, I get promoted, and I How many actually. people were with you, working with you? I have the accounts payable department, mm -hmm. and I have a uh, uh, accounts receivable department, mm -hmm. and they're Caucasian American. Oh, yes. And then this okay. little Asian, the shortest in the office. <laughs> Must literally, be. I was the literally, shortest in the okay. office. Everyone was like, "I'm looking. At, yes, I look yes, up." Yes. So I have to wear high heels. This oh my, <laughs> really yeah, high heels just okay. to. But yes. it was nice feelings mm -hmm. that I was given an opportunity to actually manage people okay. that typically a back few years back mm -hmm. I, I feel like oh, it would not happen yeah. right yes, because yes, they're yes. they you know they are they lead, they mm -hmm. lead, they were born in the yeah. US yes, they're yes. you know so. so so somehow the landscape now in the US in terms of hiring uh, mm -hmm. non-Americans or non-Caucasians is like very promising. I think I think yeah. that's the prevalence mm -hmm. now. No? Yes, it oh, is. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's more forgiving now. Okay. And also it, it doesn't hurt that most Asians, there's this stereotype about Asians mm. being smart. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, that's a good label. Yes, huh? that's yeah, a good label. it's like one of those stereotypes that, you know, Asians always get you know, like A plus or something. Okay, straight okay. A students. Hardworking maybe. Hardworking. Uh -oh. and Industrious. Also, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. that's that's true okay. that's true so mm -hmm. yeah yeah, mm -hmm. right. And uh, the fact that here you are, it's been like well, more than 20 years and we're counting, no? Mm -hmm. uh, that you have stayed in the U.S. Were there instances, Miss Lisa, that you found yourself applying what you had learned? I think you had mentioned mm -hmm. that. But the technical aspect of your of your course, yes. industrial engineering, to what you are doing now in uh, accounting. Yes. Um, well, let me go back to my uh, job at Trelleborg Ceiling Solutions. Mm -hmm. Trelleborg is actually a Swedish company mm -hmm. who's also have a multi. It uh, has different location in Asia yeah. and Europe, right? Mm -hmm. So I was a controller at uh, Logistics Center of America, oh, okay. which we it's a basically a supply chain mm -hmm. management. Mm -hmm. So back as a controller, I was the second in command. So I was mm -hmm. also involved with operations. Mm -hmm. So if I don't just deal with budgets and mm -hmm. and uh, financials, I yeah. deal with other. I was involved with different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as an engineer, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not, not yeah, I'm not basically foreign to project management. Yes, yes. So I have to manage project. I actually spearheaded the. I was one of the teams 
uh, team member to implement foreign trade zone mm -hmm. for our location. So we did a project management. We used different uh, like a risk management assessment, mm -hmm. making sure we're like we have all this different scenario. What happened if this won't happen? What what we need to do? Mm -hmm. So we have to figure out for the mitigation yeah. of each of the risks that we identified. Yes, yes. And so that is. IE 101 yeah, <laughs> right there. Yeah, certainly. My yes. gosh, no? Yes, yeah, and right. I also actually, I actually went back and get my um, AS9100D um, certification. Uh, so, was that here in the Philippines in or the in US. the US? Ah, okay. So it's but related to industrial engineering? Yes, okay. in a way, because mm -hmm. it's related to quality. Mm, so yeah. it's basically a quality management certification okay. mm -hmm. for aerospace companies. Ah, okay. Yes, yeah. because uh, Trelleborg actually manufactures some of uh, military grade mm -hmm. and an aerospace product. Yes, yes. So, yes. and I was um, one of the, the senior quality manager mm -hmm. i was he picked me as his successor oh so yeah. he's ready to retire yeah so when he retired and we're still looking for a new job a yeah. new replacement yes, for yes. him mm -hmm. i took over as a quality manager okay. Okay. so with that and then so mm -mm. It, quality is part of ie right so right. He said, you're an industrial engineer, you have a background <laughs> on that. So he said, you can do it. And he, saw, yeah. he said, I saw you manage people. Okay. So that's one of those things that I actually, I'm boasting here. <laughs> so we have this. You're a product of Foundation <laughs> University, so you're allowed to do yeah, that. <laughs> well, we have this, it, um, yeah. what do you call this? We have this annual employee engagement mm -hmm. survey. That department was 63% in, in the, in the percent okay. in the engagement level. Mm -hmm. When I took over, it went to 100%. 100, wow. Yes, the HR called me and says, what did you do? I okay. said, wait, what happened? He's like, your engagement is 100%. And I was just interviewing your, your team. And yeah. they said that we never thought that I would have a boss like her. All that okay. stuff. I was like, oh, yeah. that's a good compliment. Yeah. So it's like, I thought I bossed that. I thought. Yeah. Well, was it ever part of your plan? Uh, something like even while you were here in college that uh, you would go to the U.S., work there? Was it ever mm -hmm. part of the plan? Nope, nope. Mm -hmm. I've never planned to go to the U.S. Because at that time, you know what's really funny? Because most of my board mates at that time, because yeah. I live in a boarding house, they yeah. have like pen pals. Okay. They have to talk to people. And the truth is, I met my husband, not through me. My A friend of mine actually posted my profile okay. online and my husband saw emailed it. me, saw yeah. it. Ah, and okay. it took me two months because I was working on my feasibility study. I was so busy. You were yet a student at the yeah, time. Yeah, I was a student mm -hmm. at the time. And I yeah. don't own a computer. I go to internet cafe okay. to do yeah. my paperwork. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so, it was, so your husband saw your photo. Yes, yeah. and, and I told uh, Elgin was her name. Mm -hmm. She was actually a business student here. Okay. So we were your roommates. friend. That's your friend. Yes, mm -hmm. my friend. She's the one who posted that. Mm -hmm. So that's how I met my husband, and mm -hmm. I told them, hey. If I'm planning to marry an, uh, an American or a foreigner, I might as well not study this hard. Why? Okay. That's what I said. So yeah. my plan was really to just stay here in the Philippines, mm -hmm. start a career, and yeah. you know, I already have these big plans about get become, you know, climbing the ladder eventually, get my own house, yeah. and bring my grandma with me. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so that was my dream. So the, the usual, no, wide-eyed uh, dream of mm. uh, a fresh graduate. Yes. Yeah. And you know, it's like yeah. life okay. has a way of. Yes, right, yeah. right. So, so in other words, no regrets at all, no, Miss Lisa. I suppose not at all. No, no. I feel I don't really dwell on regrets. Yeah. Uh, for me, one of my philosophy in life is that things happen for a reason, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't matter what you do. You kick yeah. and scream, or it's like I don't want to do this, but yes, no, yes, no. Yes. It's always life. It is what it is. The journey. Right. So. I've never regret any of them, yeah. and uh, I also have a really good memory, so I remember wow. all of them too. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> no need so, to forget yeah. them, in yeah. fact. No? So don't forget them, just yes. learn. For me, yes, that's what yes. I always told myself. Everything that happens in your life, learn yeah. something from it. Yeah. But don't. but you, you know the, the unplanned, how would I call it? The unplanned plan mm -hmm. or something like that, so, no? Really materialized uh, quite well, no? Mm -hmm. uh, especially now that yeah. uh, you have reached uh, this far mm -hmm. as far as your career is concerned and even combining the best of both worlds if we may call it as such no yes. yeah so again the the adventure I, i'd like to call you as an adventurous person because here you are fresh out of college 
uh, a provinciana, if yes. we may call ourselves mm. such, no? And then jumping jumping the gun and like uh, going off with your, at the time, your fiancé, mm. no? And uh, were, were there times when you said, uh, will I be able to make it in the U.S.? Uh, uh, will there be times when I would say, oh my gosh, probably I'll go back uh, because I get homesick and so on? No. W was there an uncertainty? Not uh, really, because I always... One thing you can, I would describe myself is I'm a fighter. Mm. I don't give up. Yeah, I don't okay. like to give up. And one of the things that I also, I just mentioned this to the students yeah. last time, but uh, life is a journey. So you're always going to have an experience. You just have to learn how to react to every okay. situation so you mm -hmm. have. I mean, it's yeah. not going to be perfect. There are going to be times that you want to give up. You feel mm -hmm. like, oh my God, I need to get, but no, you just keep going one mm -hmm. step at a time. Sometimes two step back, one step forward, yeah, but yeah. I always, for me, I, I always fight back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm not perfect. Obviously, mm -hmm. there are times that I cried. Mm -hmm. You know, I cried. I feel like, oh, but mm -hmm. I'm like that. Even in my life now, yeah. it's like I talked to my friend like mm -hmm. a month or so ago, and there was something about my job that I, it's like, okay, I, it's just so stressful sometimes. There are yeah. times like that I was stressed. Yeah. So I said to myself, I'm just going to wallow for a day, and then mm -hmm. tomorrow I'll be done. <laughs> I'll be good. So that's what typically what I do. Yeah. It's like one day I go out with my friends and just one day. I just give myself one day to just let go. Yeah. Cry if I have to and then go back up and fight again the next day. <laughs> Something like distress yourself, no? Yes. Would yes. you uh, recommend uh, our young people now, no? our graduates for example, soon to be graduates to like try their luck uh, outside of the country at this point? Um sure. Mm -hmm. For me, yeah. do whatever it's like. Do whatever you want. Do what what you think is best. Mm -hmm. Go with your gut. Yeah. That's what I said because it's an adventure out there. Yeah. There's big world out there. So if you want to stay in the Philippines, stay. Yeah, That's like okay. as long as you're happy, mm -hmm. you keep learning and just keep True. going. True. <laughs> in your case, actually, uh, listening to you, Miss Lisa, and then I was just reading your profile as yes. well. It was like uh, it's on a silver platter. Uh, it was given to you on a silver platter. Like everything just came into place. <laughs> and here you are now looking at no. you, happy as ever, and truly proud of how Foundation University has yes. molded you into uh, what you are now. Mm -hmm. We will be talking more with you, Miss Lisa, and uh, we shall be right back, friends, after uh, this break, and we will be talking some more with how uh, Miss Lisa has uh, gotten all the skills and capabilities that she has now uh, through her education here at Foundation University. We will be right back. Grit. Determination, resilience. These traits are what made Foundation University overcome the obstacles of the pandemic for more than two years. With the future being uncertain, it was difficult to make plans. Life or whatever was left of it in the minds of Foundationites was at a standstill. This year, just in time for the new academic year, Foundation University shows to the world that she can weather any storm. With full face-to-face -face classes back, the campus brims with life as teachers and learners make up for time spent online. The challenges in the past have tested how far Foundation University can go. From where we are, there is nowhere we can go but up. As we rise and stand united, we face the coming year with optimism and hope as Foundation University proudly soars on her 74th year. Just as the Greyhound is capable of leaping to greater heights, so does Foundation University. FU at 74 proudly soar. Yes, we're right uh, here on iGreyhound Friends, still on Channel 6 and being streamed live on the main Facebook page of Foundation University. And we are still speaking with Miss Lisa Neuer, yes, and uh, she's a former Celis, uh, very proud to be a Foundationite. And uh, we have been talking to her about her experiences in the U.S. And yes, uh, the last time we, like, like uh, picking up from where we had left off, you said that 
our graduates should try their luck out mm -hmm. there, no? In the outside world. Well, of course, if they want to stay here in the Philippines, yes, they can. But perhaps spread their wings, yes. no? Uh, wherever they, wherever luck and perhaps uh, goodwill would, would bring them. But Miss Lisa, tell us about the your experiences here while you were yet a student um, at Foundation University. In college, were you a work scholar? Yes. Uh, the uh, struggles that you experienced, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, Foundation, when I started in Foundation University, the only reason I'm, I was here is because Foundation University offered me a 100% scholarship. Wow. So yes. I okay. almost not got in it because I missed the first semester where I'm supposed to enroll. Okay. So I went to talk to the VP of Academic Affairs mm -hmm. at that time, Miss Ms. Tan, mm -hmm. I think. Yes, yes. So I talked to her. Must and be Dr. Tan. Dr. Tan, huh? Dr. Tan, Tan yes. Yeah. Yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. So I explained to her my situation and she said, okay, do you know how hard it is to maintain a 100% scholarship? What, was, was that what she said? Yes. Oh, okay. Because for, I, I have to maintain a certain grade to keep, I think it was one point, uh, back then our grade rating is one is the highest. Until now. Until That's, now. It's yes. still the same. Okay, because yeah. in the U.S. it's the four is the highest. Oh, okay. It's, it's 4.0. Yeah. Yes. Mm -mm. So... So I think I have to maintain 1.25 mm -hmm. at least, and then if it goes down to a, a certain grade, it would be 75% scholarship. Mm -hmm. And then if it goes down to a certain yes. level, 50% okay, scholarship. Okay. So it's prorated. Yes, huh? it's so prorated speak, depending yeah. on where my grade level mm -hmm. is average yeah. for the semester, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So my sem grade this semester will determine what would be my scholarship mm -hmm. the next semester. Yeah. So it was really hard because uh, it was a hard, it was not easy. It was hard. I, I think my life was just study mm -hmm. and boarding house and school, and boarding school, house yeah. and school kind mm -mm. of thing. And one of the things like I mentioned to you, mm -mm. we're poor. Mm -mm. So I don't, I cannot afford books. Okay. So I, I'm mm -mm. in the library mm. all the time yeah. <laughs> to study. <laughs> okay. And there are times that I cannot stay in the library at all, so I have to photocopy pay chapters yes. ahead yes, based yes. on what money I have. Mm -hmm. I remember it was 60 cents per page. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, it was that hard because yeah. my I barely have money for food, to okay. be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I pass out twice mm -hmm. in college mm -hmm. because I, there are times I skip dinner because okay. the, the food money for my dinner mm -hmm. goes to my photocopy okay. because mm -hmm. for me, it's Study is yes, yes. It's the priority. Mm -hmm. So I don't have that. And, and then I also have a classmate, a roommate in college that was an engineering student. So I that we have an engineering drawing and design class mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't afford T square and yeah, mechanical the, pens. All that. Yes, Those are expensive. Yes, yes. So the I materials asked, that you need, yes. no? Yeah. So okay. I asked her, mm -hmm. hey. When are you gonna take your class? So after you're done, can I borrow any oh, of those? Oh, I see. So okay. that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I borrowed some of he, uh, her equipment, yeah. mm -hmm. and so between that, it, it was it was a struggle really? for me my maintaining goodness. my scholarship. Yeah. Me, uh, keep going because yeah. my aunt said if your grade w will go down, we, you can't have a scholarship. Yes, then we, yes. you can't continue. Yeah. We can't afford it. Of course, yeah. So and my aunt was helping me with some of my allowance, but okay. you know we're poor. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's one of the struggles I've yes, had in, yes, in yes. college. But I just mm -hmm. keep going. I said yeah. no, and right. uh, I end up having a lot of uh, education student at that time mm, yeah. as a roommate. Okay. So mm -hmm. they learned that I'm really good at drawing yes. and all that oh, stuff. I wow. love to draw. I love okay. to draw. I taught mm -hmm. myself so mm -hmm. when they have some visual aids that yeah. they needed because back then we don't have computers most of right. the time we just use yes. papers and yes, stuff yes, uh, yes. For, so I did that for them mm -hmm. I did visual aids I, I stayed up all night because I studied first and then I had to do their okay. visual aids for mm -hmm. them sometimes I stayed up until four in the morning just doing their, okay. their for, for a fee of course for a fee. Yeah. yes mm -hmm. that's how I make some money mm, okay. extra money in fact no? yes extra okay. money to, so. to tide you over yes. no, with the expenses so Friday and, and then yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so, mm. so yeah, I eat uh, what? Sky Flakes. Okay, my. <laughs> and then the tang juice. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah so, tang. because they're big. Yes, so yes, it's like, yes. okay, uh, they will get me through. So I just okay. I just use that and one Sky Flakes per meal. Okay, my goodness. <laughs> so she's like, okay. oh, yeah, and then that's yeah. what I did. I had, yeah. uh, it's one of those times that. Yeah. Oh, it's not easy, but so, in other words, there's no particular regimen or a particular diet because no, you graduated no. at the top of your class. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So it was hard in that sense, but okay. it was good because mm -mm. You, uh, Foundation University uh, Engineering Department 
the professor, the instructors are very supportive. Yes, yes. They know my background okay. and so they are very supportive in terms of, you know, like giving you advice and all that. Yeah. Or um, um, they, they're very open. They're mm -hmm. very open to their students. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. one of the reasons that Till to this day, yeah. Mr. Tanalon and I, the Dean of Engineering, yes, yes, yes. we still talk. Yes, of because course. Yeah. That's how close we've gotten yes, because yes. that's how that's one of those things that I always remember yeah. about Foundation mm -hmm. University that the teachers are very right. um, supportive. Yeah. Even the dean at that time, Mr. Yeah. Renasha, okay. he yes. he was willing, he's always willing to share his mm -hmm. experience. Yeah, right. So it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's, yeah. it was it was good. It was do, do you still remember the speech that you made uh, during the during your graduation? <laughs> Usually it's the class valedictorian yes. that delivers the address. I know. Yes, I <laughs> yeah, I, maybe just the snippets of, actually, of the. Actually, I don't, I don't remember as much, uh -uh. but. Well, but but what did you tell the graduating class? I just said that you know we all have different paths path to mm -hmm. take. Okay. And just basically, um, let's just go and enjoy the journey or something like mm -hmm. that. I I okay. don't really remember the whole thing. Yeah, it's just yeah, a blur yeah. to me. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> remember, it was like twenty what? Right, right. Plus years. Yes, yes. <laughs> did, did you aim to really graduate with honors and really be on top of your class? No, mm -hmm. I just aim to continue to maintain my scholarship oh, so yeah, I can graduate. Oh, yeah, right. So right. that. The, it was just an icing of the cake okay. when I became a class valedictorian. Okay. And actually, okay. I almost didn't get it because mm -hmm. they already declare who will be the class valedictorian. Uh -huh. At that time, I think it was an art student. Okay. And Mr. Talon said, whoa, hold on. I haven't <laughs> submitted my students yet. Okay, yeah. So Mr. Talon submitted my record. And you know, I think there yeah. was a, a criteria yes. that needs to, to be mm -hmm. looked at and reviewed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they realize that yeah, it would be me. Yeah, so. usually it's the highest uh, quality, the highest, the student who gets the highest quality point average mm. that would be something like declared as the class valedictorian, yeah. and of course an honor student as mm. well. Were there times, uh, Miss Lisa, uh, during the the times that you had struggled, so to speak, not as a student, mm. but uh, you, you thought that oh my, this all all of this will just come to pass? Yes. Um, I think so. I, I was hopeful, mm -hmm. but there are times that you feel like, oh my God, it's, I, I feel like it's not going to end. Uh, Is this always endless, going to no? Yes, okay. but, mm -hmm. I, but my grandmother was okay. the main motiva motivator. Mm -hmm. yeah. She is a Christian. Okay. She prayed in the morning, she prayed mm -hmm. at night. I feel yes. like her prayers oh, is actually oh what my. pulled That's me really through. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's true. There are times that I feel like this mm -hmm. is hard. Mm -hmm. I know, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to. I'm gonna finish. Yeah, right. I'm right. gonna graduate, yeah. but I have to keep trying, yeah. right? Your grandmother is still around? No, she died uh, oh. 2015. Ah, okay. But you were already in the U.S. during yes. that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, were there things that she told you, perhaps uh, words of wisdom that she had uh, left you with? <laughs> things that you remember up to this day? Actually, no. The only thing that she tells me is not related to school. Okay. It's not related to life. But I don't know <laughs> if I want to share that here. But <laughs> really? oh she my. said that no matter what you do, no matter what happened, do not give in to boys. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. Oh my. Do not okay. give in to boys until, okay. you know, you because... Not she, even after graduation? After that, it's good. Ah, but okay. she said until we graduated. I don't want to end up finishing. Ah, so that's, okay. what said. Yeah. that's what she always Yes, said, so. right. So, so in fact, the struggle that you had, no, was both with your acad, not really with your academics because uh, you graduated at the top of your mm -hmm. class, but to maintain, no, to maintain, uh, uh, to maintain the grade uh, mm -hmm. that is required of you, and of course to make both ends meet. My goodness, <laughs> no, that's really quite difficult, mm -hmm. especially for a student like you at the time, mm -hmm. no, uh, Miss Lisa. So now that you are in this particular stage in your life, of course there are you, you have a long way to go, of course. Yes. No? But you have a son, we can mention that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You have a 13-year-old son, mm -hmm. yes, and uh, he is in the U.S. with you. Yes. yes, okay. Now, the fact that, well, you had mentioned that uh, you're divorced mm -hmm. no, from your ex-husband, but the the fact that here you are, he actually brought you to the U.S., mm -hmm. no? it was a good life, of course, mm -hmm. and then your son is with you. Uh, things that you can probably be thankful for or grateful about uh, with all of these things or developments in your life, Miss Lisa? Um, I'm just thankful for everyone that's been part of my life. Yeah. 
Eva and my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. We're still good friends, by the way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was yeah. the most amicable divorce that we yes, ever had. Yes. So we're still good friends. So mm -hmm. anyone that I felt like been part of my life, Foundation University, yeah. of course, who's given me the first right. training. Yes. Um, all the professors and friends that I've had, my grandmother, especially my grandmother, yeah. who's raised me bless since her, I was. Bless her, bless her. Yes. Yeah. I feel like those are the people that I'm thankful mm -hmm. most, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they are the one that, mm -hmm basically influence yeah. who I am today, mm -mm, really. Mm -mm. Um, so I think that's what I'm thankful mm -mm. most. Mm -mm. Yeah. For, for an Asian no? or for someone who comes from, uh, well, an Asian country like the Philippines, making it big in the U.S. now is not impossible anymore. No. No? What with your inspiration, what with your example, but what tips can you probably share to those who would like to make it big in the U.S., whatever profession they may take, whether health-related, whether in business or in teaching for that matter? Mm -hmm. Um, just be true to who you are. Mm -mm. That's number one. Always be kind and mm -hmm. humble mm -hmm. because doesn't matter where you go. Okay. It's the world, life is a yeah. circle, yes, right? Yes. It always what comes, what goes around comes around. Mm -hmm. The third one is enjoy every journey of it. And there's the fourth one. Mm -hmm. Everything you do, do it 110%. Okay. Because that that is what set us apart, mm -hmm. uh, Filipinos. Okay. Especially Filipinos. Yes. We are known to be hardworking. Okay. Not only smart, but hardworking yeah. people. And we are known for our attitude. Okay. So that's yeah. why I always said that the first step mm -hmm. is stay humble, yes, yes. be kind always, yeah. and 110%. Attitude, yeah, attitude. And, and, and giving your all, all. no, mm -hmm. yes, not only a hundred percent, but a hundred and one or hundred and ten. Wow, my god, when you when you go, whatever profession mm -mm. you do, mm -mm. give hundred ten percent, and that's what set us apart. Yeah, and I, and another thing that I can tell you is that I actually met a Canadian mm -hmm. uh, director of IT mm -hmm. in my life, and he said to me, The best uh, recruiting that I did was. Hiring a Filipina as one of my IT. Oh wow! That's what okay. he said. Wow. So that's what yeah. he said to me. He's like, oh, yeah. that's nice. So yes, I was proud yes. as a Filipina, even though I'm not. I'm not the one he hired. But yes, yes. Because <laughs> it was the IT department. Yeah, but right. When he met mm -hmm. me, he said, mm -hmm. yeah. he was he was correct when yeah. he hired a Filipino. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Can you can you now combine the best of both worlds, so to speak, no, uh, Miss Lisa, like? Being an Asian, you, you are yet uh, an, a Filipino citizen, or I'm already a U.S. citizen. A U.S. citizen, but can you still combine the best of both worlds? Your Asian characteristics, mm -hmm. or the traits that we possess as Asians, or even as Filipinos, and now that you are an American citizen. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can always do. You, you, like I said, you always be true to yourself. Yeah. You know, even I've been in the U.S. for twenty plus 20 years plus, or something, yeah. but. Mm -mm. I still don't like pizza or burger. <laughs> really? Spaghetti. Oh my, no, I was I about like to this, ask that. Yeah, so I don't like those kinds of food. Oh. I still eat rice. I still, oh, okay. you know. And, um, mm. but just be true to yourself wherever okay. you go mm -hmm. and um, everything will just fall in place. Okay. Don't yeah. be, do not pretend to be yeah. someone else. Or you can adapt, of course, yes. to the way of life. And you have to no? assimilate, of course. Of course. Yeah, of you course. know, language, all that stuff. Right, you, can, right. you have to assimilate. You mm -hmm. have to learn the corporate world yes, as well. Yes, yes. How to interact with your colleagues and things like that. Different companies have their different culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different culture, different company, different culture. Mm -hmm. You have to, every time you start a new job, which I did, mm -hmm. you have to assimilate yourself to their culture, mm -hmm. the way they do business. They have their own acronyms. They have their own way of hiring people. Yes, they yes. have their own way of doing things. Even yes. if it's accounting, right? Accounting may be debits and credits, mm -hmm. but they have different systems, yeah. Different ways of uh, basically uh, policies, different accounting policies that they have to implement, different internal controls, mm -hmm. the way they implement those okay. kinds of things. So okay. there's always that. So mm -hmm. you have to learn to adapt, of course. Yeah. You have to learn to assimilate yourself, yeah. but don't forget to be yourself because being Asian is one of the best things <laughs> that you can be. <laughs> you know, that's I'm really, a bias, but oh yeah, no, nevertheless, that's really true as yes, well. No, yes. yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, and so, it does not come from you only or from us, no, but even from uh, the employers themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, working with, uh, like, of course, Americans, Caucasians, and perhaps even uh, with other nationalities, would you say that uh, they are, as, as you had mentioned, no, they are accepting, but at the same time, do they like limit what you can do? I don't think so. Do they limit it because here you are, you are Asian or something like that? I, I, I wonder if that would be a politically correct statement. Um, not really. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I don't you have think not experienced that at all? No, I don't experience any of like... I think part of it is because I've always been assertive okay. in whatever job I do. I'm mm -hmm. always assertive. I'm easy. I speak my mind yeah, regardless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like it's, I'm respectful, but mm -hmm. I speak my mind. Yeah. So I've never really let people bully yeah, me or something okay. like that. Of course, there are people who are going to try of to course, bully you, yeah. look at you, and it's like, mm, really? <laughs> You're, I, I'm, I'm an American. I've been oh, here yeah. longer than you do, da, da, right. da, and mm -mm, stuff like that. Mm -mm, but mm -mm. I manage people who's been in the company for 30 years. Okay. So you, okay. It's not my fault that mm -mm. they don't want to move mm -mm. up kind of mm -mm. thing. So mm -mm. for me, I just deal with yeah. it. It's part of the journey, right? right? It's part of my job. But I've never experienced that. Yeah. But in other areas, like when I first got to the U.S., if I go to the groceries mm -hmm. and I don't have my husband with me. Okay. They will look, they have to check your grocery store, uh, grocery, grocery bag, bag. Uh -huh. to make sure that you didn't have anything in uh, your you, bag. You, you mean steal, added, added yes, to it aside from anything. those that you will be paying yes. for? Really? Yes. Oh my. When my husband is oh. not with me. Really? And then... Uh, when I go to, when I apply for a credit card, for example, okay. because mm -hmm. in, the, in the U.S. you have to have a credit yes, history, right? Yes, yes, yes. If I apply myself, nobody will give me that opportunity. Oh. It's like, nope. Even but, if your family name is American? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So, but my husband has to co-name. Oh, so, the, there's see. that kind of thing. Ah, that okay. When okay. I, but it has changed since then. Okay. It has changed since I've experienced some racism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back then as well, okay. we were like, we go to the restaurant, we okay. will be put at the corner and really? then you've been left there and nobody will even give you water. Even if your husband was with you? Yes, oh. and other, because okay. because we were an uh, interracial couple. Mm, yeah. So it mm. was like that, but nowadays, okay. it, it was changed because mm. now you can see there's more uh, African American yes, and Croatian American yes. couple nowadays. So okay. it was not as bad. So okay. It makes me happy to see okay. that really because yeah, back nice. then I felt several mm -hmm. times that yeah. I've been, okay. you know, I, I feel uh, like we're being yeah. Regarded as such, no, or something. No? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you, I think your situation, uh, Miss Lisa, maybe I, I'll label it as quite convenient because you did not have any other company that you can, well, you know, compare your, your job with mm -hmm. or the situation where you are because that's your first job. The job that you held, right, mm -hmm. in uh, Indiana mm -hmm. or when you came over to the United States because you did not work here in the no. Philippines. You immediately went to the U.S., mm -hmm. no? And that's really a big leap, my mm -hmm. goodness, no? Immediately after graduation. Mm -hmm. So no uh, point by which you can like not really compare, no, but maybe make a parallel or maybe like uh, say that, oh, my company is similar to this. No, no, mm -hmm. I can't because I've never had experience yeah, right. working here in, in the Philippines. Yes, yes, yes. No. Okay. So it was far easier, I suppose, no? Because that was your first yeah. job, your first attempt. Mm -hmm. at the going professional mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i did an internship over there okay. so for me uh, yeah. that's really good I, I always encourage everyone yeah. to do that to have mm -hmm. that if you have the opportunity yes, to do yes. it talking about internship did you also go on an internship program here while you were an ie no there was back then i don't think there was ah, any okay oh. there was not then i wish there was because now our students uh, really go on an immersion yeah yeah they don't have okay. that back then either okay. so, so i wish there was yeah so you find it helpful really if you have something mm -hmm. like that yes okay. and i've just heard about that actually last wednesday when mm -hmm. i spoke to the students, to the students. Mm -hmm. that because that's one of the things i uh number one of my bullet points that you mm. I wish I know I have before I graduated. Ah, okay. So you, so have, you listed it down yes, there. Yes, ah. so in PowerPoints, you have to either apprenticeship mm -hmm. or internship, mm -hmm. right? So you have, if you have that opportunity, do it. Mm -hmm. And then I've learned that the the uh, the what do you call it? senior students yeah, already yes. have that on on the job uh, training. Uh, yes, yes. So it's yes, like, our oh. graduating students. So yes. we, which is good. I said, yeah. yes, you should do that. And yes, it, yes, even yes. after graduating, right. if somebody offers you a, an opportunity and you don't have other job yet, yes, yes, yes. Whether it's paid or paid less, yes. Don't, don't be. Yes. 
proud and says, oh, I have an engineering degree. I have, I'm an engineer. I have yeah. to be this. No, 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 no. Start yeah. from the bottom. Yes, yes, yes. And the, yeah, and, and toe, the, toe the line, no? yes. so to speak. Did you have projects like what our students are doing now? Yeah, we have like a facility study that oh, we yeah, have to do. Oh, yeah, feasibility. Yeah, okay. And, yeah, mm -hmm. we did that. And that's really very helpful because it's like applying the theories mm -hmm. already while well, yet a student. In fact, <clears throat> talking about the students, uh, Miss Lisa, I interviewed uh, three or four students and they brought their projects here as part of their oh. feasibility study. Very, very interesting. So, um, when you were a student here, I suppose it was like 20 or something years, 2001, right? 2001, 2001 yes. Uh, 2001. The students back then and now, I wonder if we can make a parallelism of the students during your... No, I'm not I'm making it sound like it was a long time ago, but no, of course it's not. It's a long no? time ago. Yeah. <laughs> not really. Okay. Like I was looking at the students, yes, um, okay. that's one thing. I said, oh my God, they look like my kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yes. So, um, well, I, I, not so much. It's mm -hmm. more like they're more modern now. They everyone okay. is holding a phone and yes, laptop and right. tablets. Yeah. Back in my days, we don't have computer. Okay. The computer we have is the computer lab the, yeah. that we go yes, to. Yes. We go to internet cafe mm -hmm. if we needed to. Only a few yes, can yes. own laptops at yes, that time. Yes. Okay. So it was like I think that's the main difference. Nowadays, they the information they hold it in mm -hmm. their hands. They have that's that, yeah. and that is what makes them, mm -mm. in a way better i think yes, because they okay. have it's just on the, t the informations that, yeah. are there the yes. on the tip of their hands right, right. we don't have that we mm -hmm. go to the library <laughs> yes okay so we have to like mm -hmm. go to the library you read, know borrow read, all those yeah read or photocopy you know yes. yes right no screenshot or something no, no, like yes. that they're doing now no yeah, i know yeah. and nowadays if you cannot go to the library you just google it yes, and chances right. are you get the answers and then, there's the, and then there's the e-library yes. right yeah and, so and everything everything is electronic and and digital mm -hmm. in fact no mm -hmm. but the uh, the best of both worlds is what we were talking about miss lisa uh good things that you have learned in the past mm -hmm. and those that you are learning or have learned now that you are already a professional? What are those, uh, well, perhaps one or two that would still be relevant until today or useful? Okay, the main thing is communication mm -hmm. skills. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, for me, when I say communication skills, doesn't mean you have to have a perfect grammar. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you have to have a perfect enunciation because yeah. I don't. Okay. <laughs> I still struggle, mm -hmm. but when I say communication skills, okay. Call, then in mm -hmm. here in a foundation university mm -hmm. or anywhere you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I say communication skills, basically you're um, not just a presentation skills, but mm -hmm. your persuasive skills, mm -hmm. that the skills that you have to actually be able to articulate the yeah. information you want people to understand, mm -hmm. the information you want them to have, okay. and to buy into your ideas because in a corporate corporate world that mm -hmm. will be what you will be doing mm -hmm. and I in, in my experience my boss always have me do a lot of negotiating for okay. my even yeah. if it's not my department mm -hmm. because I was I'm able to uh, convince, convince other departments yeah. to actually do a bite to our ideas mm -hmm. to actually do some projects to actually move forward yeah. And so an example I can give you on that one is that we have like an IT mm -hmm. uh, project okay. that this, the, our senior quality manager mm -hmm. has been trying to get it done for nine years. Okay. And he was not able to do wow. that. So my boss was like, why don't you look at it and okay. take over and see what you can do. Okay. So, wow. I, you know, as an engineer, yeah. what would you do? Mm -hmm. do you, not an accountant. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking like in an engineer oh. where you try to figure out what are, so I ask questions, a mm -hmm. lot of whys. Mm -hmm. What are we trying to do? Why are we doing it? Who are responsible? All that stuff. Okay. And then gather all that information and then speak to the other end and okay. ask them the same questions. Why don't you want to do it? Mm -hmm. Why is it you're pushing back? What's holding you back? Okay. This is the idea. This is the main goal. Mm -hmm. We're all the same company. So at the end of the day, they get it done in a week. Wow, look at that. <laughs> yes. uh, and they were not able to do it in nine years. In nine years. Wow, because can he, you imagine because that? he mm -hmm. just decided to give up because okay. it's IT. IT is not yes, going to do it. Any, yes, any yes, project okay. that we need IT for, it's not going to get done. Yes, okay. But I told yeah. the person in front of me, I said, mm -hmm. well, why won't you want to do it? It's, it's a project mm -hmm. that we need to do. Mm -hmm. It will make the process efficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to get you guys to get it done. What does it take right, for you right. to do it? Yeah. We also present our our information that we have yeah. and what's what's costing it, why mm -hmm. we needed to get it done. So 
by explaining yeah. that they were able to do that yeah. so see that is one of those things that my boss mm -hmm. always comes to me i'm the problem solver <laughs> basically <laughs> like oh so yeah. like we have a project manager and mm -hmm. he has trouble getting that project okay. done so, mm -mm. why don't you sit down in a meeting with him okay. that's what he always yeah. said why don't you right. sit down in a meeting with him maybe yeah. you can help so it's not only communication skills uh, basically but uh, perhaps convincing, convincing skills like it's a persuasive yeah. skills mm -hmm. but you have to be able to articulate yeah. what is right. that you and, and be clear with what you're trying to say yes. you know? yeah yes. okay because it doesn't yeah. matter how good your english is if you're, yeah. you cannot explain True, your, your side, really, yeah, you, right. how perfect your English yeah. will be. Yes, if, you can, yes. if you don't know how to explain yeah. the process, you don't know how to, to picture the process yes. in your head and yes, to be yes. able to relate it to mm -hmm. people and actually have them understand it, Mm -mm. That's a different story. And, and understand it as well, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. with the few minutes that we have left, it has really been nice talking to you, Miss Lisa. In the few minutes that we have left, perhaps you have some words that you'd like to leave by to our faculty, to our students. I know that you have spoken to them, but we are worldwide, on worldwide television. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that we are also being watched uh, by individuals who may have graduated uh, from Foundation University like you. But things that you would like to leave them by our students, our graduates, those who would be graduate parents, in fact, your former teachers. Yeah, you have the floor, Miss Lisa. So, um, I don't have a big speech, but I just mm -hmm. want to thank uh, Foundation University uh, yeah. for giving me the opportunity to actually have my degree. I was, like I said, from the very beginning, Foundation University gave me that degree, and it's the I was the first one who had the, that degree mm -hmm. in my family. In family and it's a big deal so thank you so much um, and I also would like to thank Mr. Tanelon or Dean Tanelon he's been always been on my side since college um, Mom Chona, mm -hmm. Fodalan, yeah. yes, Mr. Yes. Absent now. They're still here, yeah. Yes, uh -oh. Mr. Absent now used to be my classmate. <laughs> uh, they've been very, uh, yeah. they've been very good to me throughout my experience here in Foundation. Foundation is a good university, and I always said that. But what? Just so you know, when I'm in the U.S., I'm digressing, by the way. Mm -hmm. When I'm in the U.S., fine. I it's don't fine. say F.U. I just course. I always have to say Foundation yes. University. You have to spell it out. Because it's not like yeah. Silliman, you say S.U., it's fine. <laughs> but if you say F.U., it would be bad. Yeah, you have to so, spell it out, yeah. <laughs> so that's the main thing that I could say. Just, just, just want to say thank you. Yeah, thank you right, for that. Yeah. It's been a great it's been a great opportunity for me to actually have that yes, in yes. my life. Uh, Book. Yeah, in your career. Yeah, and that is why you are blessed, Miss Lisa. <laughs> we really wish you well. We're proud, proud of how, what you have become mm -hmm. and what you would still uh, become in the in the coming years. And thank you very much once again You're for welcome. also coming over and visiting us here uh, in your alma mater. So we wish you Godspeed. And as I would like to always mention, may your tribe increase, not necessarily within <laughs> your family, but among the accountants or among the industrial engineers that we would soon be producing here at Foundation mm -hmm. University. So hope to see you again and uh, be back here as well uh, to interview you, Miss Lisa. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. So with that, friends, we bring to a close another very very interesting episode uh, of I Greyhound. Hope you will be with us in our next uh, episodes by next Thursday. Please do not forget we have replaced every Friday and Saturday from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 3 in the afternoon on Channel 6 of Phil Products TV Dumaguete. Thank you very much once again to my stylist, Miss Nicole Kalumpang, for my beautiful outfits on the show as always. This has been Cecile Henove bidding everyone a pleasant evening. College leads you to the future. What it takes is for you to have a strong knowledge foundation. At Foundation University, quality first-hand learning is achieved through our state-of-the-art facilities. You can choose your dream profession and become who you want to be in a fun learning environment. After all, you can't spell fun without FU. Experience what it's like to be a professional while studying. FU believes that grades alone do not define a student. Rather, it also gives importance to skills necessary for facing the real world. Choosing FU is literally choosing your life purpose. With excellence, commitment, 
and integrity, you can make a difference. At FU, you can be the one. The entire world has been on the cusp of its fourth industrial revolution, the era of artificial intelligence, robotics, and smart devices. Not only do these changes influence our lifestyle, they shape the future of jobs and the skill sets students must master to face what is required of them. Education 4.0 is here, and FU has your back. Deciding on whether or not to attend university as well as which university to go to are tough decisions to make. We're here to assure you that continuing your education at FU is well worth your while. Why? Because we focus on quality, innovation, and versatility to guarantee students the preparation they need for the real world. In 2015, the World Economic Forum reported the fluctuations in four skill sets and how they continue to change drastically. What was once demanded has faded away into automated jobs, and what is now sought for in the job force are complex problem-solving skills, emotional intelligence, creativity, and precise communication skills. People must also adapt to incorporating smart technology, robotics, and artificial intelligence in several fields now. Research has shown that the safest jobs that won't become automated anytime soon by robots are careers in creativity, innovation, and people-oriented positions. It's a huge transition the next generation has to face, and that's you. But there is no need to worry. In fact, it's time to get excited. With big change comes big opportunity, and FU has fully integrated Education 4.0 to prepare you. So what exactly is Education 4.0? It means the synthesis of smart technology to promote independent digital learning at a student's pace. Essentially, a student can learn theoretical knowledge and soft skills at home while honing practical skills face-to-face. -face. FU already demonstrated its prepared and adaptive state by having the iPad program in place before the pandemic hit and we managed to quickly switch to online courses for our students unlike any other university in Negros Oriental. As Benjamin Franklin once said, failing to prepare is preparation for failure. We want every student to succeed and will do whatever it takes. We realize that job security means skill set flexibility. If you have an entire arsenal of skills at your disposal, then you can choose between a whole host of jobs upon graduation. And if you feel prepared for a new chapter in your life, you'll excel with a strong foundation of confidence. Our Foundation University Expanded Learning Program, aka FUEL, has not only allowed FU students across the Philippines to continue learning despite the pandemic from the comfort and safety of their own home, it has brought forth the opportunity to advance each student's skills with technology. It's an absolute must in the 21st century to navigate the threshold of the internet and software programs through our electronic devices. We saw our own faculty create innovative approaches for transitioning their lectures and laboratory courses online, as well as our students' ability to adapt to virtual classrooms and enhance their self-discipline. It doesn't matter if it's online or on campus. FU graduates come out on top not only feeling more prepared than other graduates around the nation, they are more prepared. This is because our unique pedagogies break what's outdated in traditional teaching methods. We incorporate the latest webinars and workshops from experts all over the world. We make sure every student becomes fluent in the language of technology and relevant software programs for their fields of study. We emphasize constructive feedback in our courses and guarantee each class to be a safe space for discussions. We promote cross-cultural communication skills across every discipline, and we continuously update our curriculums because that's what preparation is all about. The bottom line is, we religiously adapt to keep our students ahead.
there's nothing like knowing you are fully capable and ready for the job market that's at your disposal. It may seem intimidating to see the long, exhaustive list employers put out for potential candidates because they're trying to make their lives easier. So we have concentrated on making it easy for our students. We make sure that they can check off every asset on the list. The average person goes through about 12 different jobs in their lifetime. So what if an innovative education steeped in the right direction could get you there with ease? That is what FU is offering. It's not only about job opportunities. It's job opportunities for decades to come.